There are many events in the past that have changed history. And when I'm saying changed history is because the change was until the day. And some of those changes will be forever. You may be thinking about wars or revolutions or some discoveries, things that have changed our lives, our world the system forever. You know, one of those changes that happened to the religious world, especially to us as Christians, it goes back to the Old Testament where um, something happened that changed our relationship, at least there back then, that we've carried on with God forever. So a religious historical change that took place, which is forever. I want you to put attention. I'm going to read from 1 Samuel chapter 8. And if you read it in your Bibles, probably the title will tell you what I'm about to talk about. The title is Israel Demands a King. Just so you know the history a little bit, God had a and at that point, God had appointed Samuel to be the prophet over his people. And as Samuel is aging, then he appoints his two sons to be more like judges over the people that would judge um, their actions, their disputes, um, when they would come to the temple, bring their offerings, all those things, very traditional religious practice that he had appointed his two sons to watch over. But then we read about his two sons being very corrupt, dishonest, and even the scripture says they would pervert justice. I mean, extreme dishonesty. So out of this, the people gather, they come to Samuel, and they demand, demand the following. They say, will you appoint a king to judge over us like all the other nations? When Samuel hears this, he goes to the Lord and he speaks this prayer, which in response in verse number seven, here's what the Lord says. And the Lord said to Samuel, obey the voice of the people in all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, Samuel, but they have rejected me from being king over them. Every time I read this word, I know that history changed. Something changed. I, t in my opinion, is as, as painful in God's heart as whatever happened in Genesis. It was humanity again claiming independence from God. Why? Because God was their king and they were his people. But here it says, look, Samuel, they have not rejected. They rejected me from being king over them. Do you feel the pain in those words? I do. And, and that's why I tell you, I feel like history changed again. You know, God loves his people so much that I don't want to say he, he's trying to convince them out of that decision, but as a good father, as a good king to them, gives them the warning, says, this king of yours that you want to choose will not only take the best out of you, but will take the best of you your best sons and daughters and, and whatever you have, the grain, the fruits, the trees, the land, he's going to take the best of you and the best out of you and gives them this warning. And verse 18 says, in that day, when you realize what you've done, you will cry out because of your king, whom you have chosen for yourselves, but the Lord will not answer, will not answer you in that day. This chaotic, painful, uh, history-changing moment, I believe, happens until now. I want to warn many of you, many of us, I want to scream this to the world, that a lot of the crying happens in our lives because we ourselves have chosen other kings. Kings whom we go to for protection. Kings who are the first option to go and expect blessings. Now, I'm assuming you understand what I mean with kings. You title it. Is it a career? Is it your title? Is it your possessions? Is it your 
physical appearance, whatever it is, you've appointed a king, you've said, you will provide for me. You will rule over me. I will come to you for everything I need in life. And by doing that, we've claimed independence from God. Just the way God warned Israel, he says, you, you, you'll cry one day because you've proclaimed, you wanted independence from me. And he says, and he, God said to Samuel, they haven't just rejected you, they've rejected me. It's, it's a warning to all of you, my friends. It's a warning to all of us, just to make sure that no matter what comes in our lives, we'll always respect our authorities in life. Yet king, we have one, the king of kings. Let me close with Revelation chapter 19, verse 16. On his robe, this is Christ returning, on his robe, on his tie, he has a name written. It says, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. I love that. I think um, if you and I are honest, there are areas in our lives, there are decisions in our lives that we need to go back and say, Lord, no, we have one king and we want to be part of that one kingdom. Think about it. God bless you.